I'm going to show you how to get the cheapest real estate in the United States. This is your show. This is the show where I work for you directly, taking your needs. I'm going through the MLS and I'm trying to find the best possible deal for you guys. Put down 25%. That's the perfect way to buy this. That's why real estate investing is the greatest industry in the world. Welcome to the MLS Search and Analysis Show. I'm James Wise. This is Holton Wise TV, and I help people like you acquire real estate. All types of real estate, but one type that we specifically uh, specialize in some of the time is cheap real estate, right? Now, when I say cheap real estate, sometimes I work with really, really, really cheap real estate in the Cleveland market. Other times I work with higher priced real estate in the Cleveland market, which is still pretty cheap to folks outside of the Cleveland market, right? Today, I'm working with a guy by the name of Warren. Warren, you're an investor in Colorado, and you reached out to me because you're trying to get in the game with as little money as possible, right? We did another video for you talking about how you can navigate seller financing with no money down, right? But there's pros and cons to that, and I'm not one of those gurus that just fucking, you know, fucking fluffs you, right? I don't just fucking tell you it's going to be sweet, ask you to pay me. Uh, for a course and then you go out there in the real world and you try it and it doesn't work how I intended it But I'm long gone. I already fucking spent your money right now. It's not how we do it, right? Is it possible to get properties with no money down? Yeah, but you got to watch that video. You got to really understand uh, That you know like a lot of things in this world uh it, it, it's difficult, right? You're building a whole business. Part of the business would involve marketing, et cetera, et cetera. So I'll go ahead and link to that other video below because I don't want to get into a, a tangent on that again, right? It was a pretty lengthy conversation about that topic, right? But if, you know, if you're looking to do seller financing with no money down, that is the God's honest, nuts to bolts, real truth to how that would go right and maybe that works for some folks maybe it doesn't right i've done a lot of seller finance deals and some of which i've done with no money down but guess what i've also spent several million dollars marketing my business right that's a fucking caveat none of the guys writing the books or selling the courses tell you about right so check that out so since then in addition to that what i did right what i did for you is I said, let's also look at some property you can get without seller financing with a tiny, tiny, tiny basement bargain price, right? Stuff that you can pick up for around $10,000 of your own cash, right? I got lenders who will give you the other 75%, right? We're looking at stuff that you can come up with about 10K, right? So if you're starting today, brother, with zero, all you got to do is save up about 10K, and that other property I showed you, as well as the one I'm going to get into right now, after this break. <laughs> Welcome back. Let's break down the numbers of this ultra-cheap property, man. Super friggin' cheap, folks. You really can't get cheaper real estate than this anywhere else in the world, man. Well, I shouldn't say world. Anywhere else in the United States. I don't... I don't know what real estate is going for in like Baghdad. I'm not sure. I've never looked into it. 7410 Neville Ave, Cleveland, 4 for 102. Been on the market 44 days, priced at 49.9. Why? If it's so freaking cheap, has it been on the market for 44 days? Two reasons. There's two kind of buyers out there people that want to live in the house, people that want to collect cash flow, people like you. Well, guess what? This property's got a tenant in there. So anybody that wants to live in this house, not interested. That leaves cash flow investors, people like you. A lot of people are passing over this property because of what we got right here. Current tenant has been there seven years paying six fifty a month. That's stupid cheap. Stupid. This neighborhood, thousand bucks a month is what it should go for. So a lot of people are like, uh. Oh, I don't want a freaking $650 rental. I want a $1,000 rental. Well, this is a $1,000 rental. How this particular landlord has chosen to operate his or her business over the last seven years, it's irrelevant to you, right? You need to focus on this property's potential over the long haul. What is replicable? What is consistent? 
what is your ownership experience likely to be like? That's what makes sense. And I don't just talk about that when the rent is lower than the market rent. If this dude was renting this to some asshole for thirteen hundred a month, I'd tell you the same thing. I'd say let's focus on the long term projections here, right? Because I know thirteen hundred is not replicable, right? Sometimes and this this really throws off new new real estate investors. Sometimes, folks, you can convince tenants to pay above market rent, right? Guess what? They usually do it once, right? This is what happens. A lot of times, maybe the market rents a thousand. You convince some fucking asshole to pay you thirteen hundred. That person is paying you thirteen hundred. They're not stupid, bro. They're not just like in love with your house so much that they're willing to overpay for it. No. Typically what happens in that situation is that person, they know that they can't rent anywhere else. They got bad credit. They got evictions, this or that. They got problems, felonies, right? So they look for a landlord who doesn't know what's going on, charging too much. And you, being a greedy asshole that you are, see that this property is really only renting for 1000 but you got some fucker to pay 1300 So you put blinders on, your greed blinders, and then you do a deal. You, you put a tenant in your house you really shouldn't have put in your house. And guess what? That fucking tenant stops paying rent and you evict that tenant, okay? I've seen it time and time again, right? So when the rent's too low, don't go, ah, it's a bad investment. When the rent's too high, don't go, oh, it's a great investment. It's still the same fucking house, man. This house right here, look. This is the house, okay? This is the same fucking house. If we got a tenant in there at 650 right now, or if we had some tenant in there at 1300 same house. You're not going to be dealing with that one particular tenant throughout the majority of your ownership experience. No. You're going to be dealing with the neighborhood, dealing with the tenant base, dealing with Holton Wise as your property manager. And we are going to tell you, present to you what we see under properties like this. And this is very much low income investing, by the way, right? So if you guys are out there searching the Internet and you're looking for the cheapest real estate in the world, I hope you don't expect it to look like the Taj Mahal. This uh, is dated seven year tenant, but this is what I would anticipate a friggin $650 rental looks like right with the seven seven year tenant But by the way, this is this is great. This is brand new. That's awesome These things last 30 years folks furnaces 30 years is what they last they cost about three G's This looks like in its first couple of years of ownership right here You can barely see it, but this is a nice shiny hot water tank right that looks to be fairly new too i actually think they talked about it in their description let me check that out most major mechanicals have been replaced plastic plumbing and drains breaker box furnace approximately seven years old so it's got 23 years of life left in it aluminum sided house with concrete front porch tenants have been there over seven years paying 650 would like to stay now obviously they want to stay right because they're only paying 650 but uh just finishing off the pictures right updated electrical that's great this is what it is. It's low income investing, right? Thousand dollar a month rental. At a thousand dollars a month, what's that look like? Okay, that looks like approximately six grand for NOI. Approximately five thousand nine hundred thirty-five a year would be your cost, and that is me calculating things like repairs, maintenance, capital expenditures, vacancy, right? Now, as far as the price point, they're asking forty-nine nine. I'd like to try to pick it up at 45. If we pick it up at 45, we're right there by that $10,000. We'd only need 11 and a quarter. Bank kicks in 33 and three quarters. And if you got that tenant up to that price of 1,000, that's 39% cash on cash return or 14 cab. Now, before everybody's like, sweet, 39% return. Hold on. <laughs> we ain't there yet, dude. We still got a tenant paying 650, right? Now, do I think we can get that tenant at six fifty up to a thousand without turning them over? Maybe. Do I think we could do it right after you buy it? No. No. If you buy it and you're like, hey Mr. Tenant, I'm your new landlord, rents a thousand. They're gonna move out, right? I mean that's just gonna happen. They're gonna move out. Do they want to stay there forever at six fifty? Sure. You can't do that either, though. That doesn't make any sense, right? So you got to get some middle ground with these folks, right? What I like to do is either keep their rent the same for just one year and then go up fifty, hundred, something like that, or uh, do a very, very small one at the first year, though. I do like to get them in there after the first year, though, 
at the same rent because I want that paper trail, right? Trying to evict people when there's no written lease, it's a fucking pain in the ass. Does it work? Yeah, we will still get them out, but your eviction is going to cost more money. They're more likely to be granted a continuance, court mediation. It's, it's a mess. You really... The leases are there to protect everybody, but the leases are usually weighted in the favor of the landlord, okay? I mean, think about it. Who writes the lease, right? We do, okay? So we really want to get them on a lease. So I'd like to do one year lease at 650, and then after that, let's go up to 750. Then we'll try 850, right? And we'll try to keep them in there as long as we can, because you saw the pictures. That don't look nice, right? If these folks move out, we'll get a $1,000 tenant to move right back in, but it ain't going to be uh, like that. No, we're going to have to spend at least 15 grand making the house look nice, getting it ready for Section 8. So that's why the smartest play here is to slowly increase the rent, right? You ain't going to make or break your investment by only increasing the rent like 100 bucks versus going to market rent, right? Like if you have a, a unit that's only like 100 or a couple hundred bucks lower than your market rent, right? That's not the end of the world. What you really don't want to do is push out a paying tenant just so you could drop another 20k into the investment, right? That doesn't make any sense, right? Slowly work them up, slowly work up the ROI numbers over time while you're spending your money on acquiring other assets. Thanks for watching. Subscribe to Holton Wise TV for more financial information, education, and entertainment.